All right, Shalom, Shalom Ras Tefari. Greetings, Ne Ras Yadinos Tefari. Wendem Yad. And I want to, well, we're in the 37th sabbatical portion reading and feeding that's known as uh, Shalak Lika in the Hebrew and in the Royal and Hark Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Bible of His Majesty. This Torah portion is called Lak Tilkalacho. And it's, and it's relating to the 12 um, Israelite spies who were sent in to spy out the land of promise, the land that was given and promised to Abraham and to his descendants, right, to spy out that promised land. So the so 12 spies were sent. So we want to call this lecture um, Canaan, then, Shashemeni, now, or like Canaan then, like yesterday, in other words, and today it's Shashemeni. Today it's Shashemeni. Twelve spies, twelve Hebrew spies, twelve Israelite spies, we can call them, but the ten lies, the ten lies, and this is part of the series that we've been working on for this Torah portion of how to lose how to lose Jah's promised land. It was how to lose out on Jah's promise. Now, as we've been teaching, we've been teaching on the, the Amen, or the Imnet, or what we call Bamarinya, the Hymenot, the Hymenot. Poorly translated, it's translated as religion. Poorly translated into English, because the root meaning goes beyond the English word religion. So when you see something translated from Amharic, for example, the utterances of Moa Anbesas and Im Negeda Yehuda, Kadamawi Haile Salase, Siyume Egeziyawi Heb Negusa Neges Ze Etiopia, when you see translations of His Majesty's speeches and it says in, in the translated utterances um, religion, know that it's speaking of Hymenot. Hymenotes would better be translated as the living faith, the living faith. Now, belief, as we touched on before, belief is, is, is one particular level, right? But let's, let's just put this up here, firstly, Canaan, the land of Canaan, right, which was the promised land, Canaan, we can say then, to say yesterday, right, and Shashemeni, Right, Shasha many today, right? Shasha many today or Shasha many in this present time. Now, the Torah portion that we are consulting with is the Rastafari Sabbatical Study or the Sabbath Scroll number 37, right? Number 37. Now, let's turn our Bibles and within, I think we have about a, little, a half an hour or so in this particular, in this particular lecture, but we Job Willem will go into it in more detail because it, it, it behooves us to gain these instructions. His Majesty says that the Bible was written for our instruction and, and to give us encouragement, to give us strength, to give us the victory, to give us guidance. When we say Jah guide, we cannot say Jah guide and not go to his guidance and to his glory, which is the Word. So, in this particular Torah portion, and we're going to take it from from this uh, discipleship study, this, this is the primary curriculum for I and I Torah studies. But we have to know the foundation, right? We have to know what's in the foundation. So let's go here and let's touch on the 12 spies, the 12 spies and the 10 lies, the 12 spies and the 10 lies. Now this is from Shalak and the... The, the the area in the scriptures that this Torah portion um, um, constitutes is Numbers chapter 13, verse 1, to Numbers chapter 15, verse 41. Now, we in the diaspora, the diaspora, we generally read it in June. Now, its name comes from the first distinctive words of the Parsha, which are contained in Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. Now, Shalach is the sixth word, and lika is the seventh word in the parasha, and this means both send, shalach, send, and send for you, lika, in other words, 
send for the Israelites, all the Israelites who were in the wilderness, as we're in the wilderness of North America. This was reminded to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We're here in the wilderness of North America. So those, and this is now speaking in terms of the Shashimani land grant, that there were 12 pioneer settlers. There were 12 pioneer settlers of that Shashimani land grant that was given to we, the black peoples of the world, or we, the Ethiopian Hebrews here in the diaspora, which is inclusive of the ethnic Hebrews who are Rastafari, or to say of the black or African Rastafari, we the black people. Now, this particular portion, this parsha tells the story or the account of the scouts, the scouts who discouraged, they discouraged. Remember, the scriptures encourage us because the word of Jah, but there were scouts or spies who discouraged the Beta Israel who were in the wilderness. Now, this is similar to us here in the wilderness of North America and a lot of the negative news and reports that we hear and have heard over the past 40 years, connecting 67 to the new millennium, 2007, and even presently, some of these negative and discouraging reports, they turn us off. When we hear of the land grant, we hear of what the King of Kings, Hadis Lassi, did for I and I peoples, it makes us joy. So we say, well, what's going on today? And then we hear a lot of the discouraging reports. It does the same thing to us, who, who are about 2 million people. The Israelites were 2 million people in the wilderness, at least. That 2 million people, a whole generation, perished. You understand? Know a whole generation perished. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And then we have, as we, as we exit from from the Torah portion, we enter into Joshua. We have a new generation. So we see with the passing of I and I elders in Rastafari, as well as um, signified even by this 40 year period of time and the passing of the beloved Dr. Gladstone Robinson, who was appointed by the Ethiopian World Federation. We can say the imperial, the imperial landlord, which is basically us. You see, so he put the authorization in our hands, the responsibility in our hands, very much the same as the Israelites here. In addition, in the 60s, we had the mission to Africa. Many of the Rastafari speak of that, and many of the Rastafari from Jamaica also know of the mission to Africa. And it's interesting how the mission to Africa, as well as those Afro-Americans or those um, uh, African Americans or those blacks in America who also went forward, like Dr. Gladstone Robinson, Fickler Selassie, how they met up. You know what I'm saying? We have a picture of Michael Manley and Dr. Gladstone Robinson. So that's, that's a key. That's, that's significant. You know what I'm saying? That's very significant. But that's another generation. We are the generation, in a sense, following them as Joshua led a generation following that former generation who did not enter in to the promised land, and this is the key incident right here concerning the 12 spies and the 10 lies. And what's very shocking is that when we now look at the 12 pioneer settlers and we look at the true history of what went on and we compare it with Torah, we compare it with the glory of his majesty, the teaching, the instruction, it's one and the same. And, and, and it's based on the same error or the same, the same lack of faith or unbelief. They got discouraged. They no longer trusted Jah's word and started to follow after men and people. You understand? And he went away from their divine heritage. Therefore, they were not entitled to their divine inheritance. All right? So this is the area we, we want to touch on right here. So let's get into the scouts. Let's touch on the scout story for a moment. And we're going to go to this portion, page 178 of um, Bar Midbar, the Hebrew book of Numbers, which is the fourth um, Torah portion of volume four. And here it says that Jah, God, Ha Elohim, the true God, Buruku, blessed be he, Exiavi Her Bamarinya, the good is, Lotu Subhat, to him be the praise, the sustainer, told Moses, Musa, Moshe, to send one chieftain, one Ras. 
one chieftain, one elect, Alec, uh, from each of the 12 tribes of Israel to scout, in other words, to survey, or in other language, to spy out the land of Canaan, the land of Canaan, the land of promise. Now, for us, that land of promise is, generally speaking, Africa, but specifically speaking, Ethiopia. That, that is, the, we say, the holy land, Ethiopia. That's the heart. That's the capital for I and I, all right, because of the king of kings, because his throne is set there. That's where the tribes are to gather. So we have a similarity right there with the scouts being sent into the land of Canaan, and then we also have Shashimani as being that example of the land of Canaan. We can almost call it like Jericho, and perhaps this will be the Jericho you understand, of that particular um, correspondence and, 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 and checking out the scripture and then checking out the reality and then in, 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 in Ja, you know, in Ja light, seeing that, wow, these things actually do go together. You understand, that there's something that's teaching us, you know, and we're going to share what we think it is saying or our testimony, and then we want others to go over and check it out for yourself. You understand? And, and, and determine whether it's true or false, this testimony and this teaching. Now, Moses sent them out from the wilderness of Paran, right, in Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. Now, among the scouts or among the spies, we need to go over this, and we say this is the first part, but hopefully we will continue, we'll have the option to continue this and go into to more of the details of the story and share what the Holy Spirit of the Father and the Son, the overhand of the true God, the triune God, has shown I and I about this. And, and it's, it's really, really very, very, but on you go to my now. It's very interesting. Now, among the scouts were Caleb, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of Judah. There was Caleb from the tribe of Judah. And there was Hosea, Hosea, or Hoshea, the son of Nun, later to be known as Joshua, Yehoshua, of the Old Testament from the tribe of Nun. I mean, the son of Nun, but he's from the tribe of Ephraim. That means he, in a sense, was a half-tribe, in that sense, one of Joseph and his Egyptian wife, Asenah. So we once again see the black, the African relationship, like with Moses being a, a Hebrew and his wife being an Ethiopian. So therefore, when we say Ethiopian Hebrew, it's there at the very root of our truth and our story. Now, Numbers chapter 13, verses 6 to 8 mentions, mentions that. Now, Moses had changed Hosea's name to Joshua, Yehoshua, adding Yah or Eo, you understand, or Yah. Yahoshua, Yeshua is the contracted for the Savior in the New Testament. Numbers chapter 13, verse 16. Now, they scouted the land as far as Hebron. Now, Hebron is also very very interesting, and those of the disciples, brothers and sisters who are doing this study, make a note of Hebron and look up in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, Hebron, and first of all, understand what the meaning of Hebron is. And then in Bamarinya, in Amharic and Gut, is we have Hibret, Hibret or Hibret, which means unity. You understand? Like if someone say, um, I must ignore and you say, um, Abro Yisten. You understand? No, it's Abro. Abro is from that. Abre. Hebre, Hebre. So we have Hebrew also from that, but the root is unity. And remember, that's where David, Dawit, great King David, where he reigned for seven years over the tribe of Judah until the tribe, until Israel also acknowledged that there was civil war. There was different cliques, almost like what we have in the Federation and among different brethren and different groups, so forth and so on. So that shouldn't shock us. If we know our story, we'll know how to overcome those um, obstacles in, with faith, courage, and a just cause. Remember, faith is first. Without faith, you ain't going to have the courage, the confidence, the trust, the coordination, and, and, and the just cause, you understand, w w won't, won't come about. One will, one will be in a state of no justice, no peace, as we are still in the wilderness. So they scout the land as far as Hebron in Numbers chapter 13, verses 21 to 22. Now, at the wadi, you know, what's called a wadi, which is called uh, es, uh, Eskol or Eshkol, right? Es, 
kol or esh kol. Um, they cut down a branch. They had found, um, you know, scouting everything out, they wanted to bring back something to show, you know, that, that they were there. You know, like when somebody goes to Ethiopia, uh, Rastafari or one of the Ethiopian Hebrews from the diaspora go to Ethiopia, they bring back some souvenirs or other things to show, look, this was there, I got that there. So what they did was cut down a branch from a single cluster of grapes that was so large. In other words, the land was so fruitful. Now, notice Shashimani is similar to that because Shashimani is in the agricultural hub, in a sense, of Ethiopia. In other words, it's very fruitful land. You know, we as Rastafari and the elders spoke about, you know, coming out of Babylon and, and, and getting back to the land, you know, and, and farming and agriculture. But we see after 40-something years that is still to be accomplished. And why? Because of these instructions. We lack these instructions. We, we are making our own righteousness instead of submitting to his righteousness, studying and showing ourselves approved. You understand? And setting our house on the proper foundation. No other foundation other than Christos, the Moshiach, can be laid in spirit and in truth. And we cannot get to the Father unless we go through the Son. That's that's Jah's word. His majesty bear witness to it. Get a copy of um, the gospel of him. Check out, you know, check out the interview of his majesty. And we have some highlights of certain of his majesty's teaching on that particular matter. And all we're seeking to do is to be faithful to what his word is. And we're learning so much that's clarifying a lot of things that were so confusing. So when we look at the situation with, with um, seeing faith, not with blind faith, but with seeing faith. You understand? Not with blind belief, but with, with faith. Remember, faith must, to faith must be added virtue. And to that virtue, which is virtue is charity, charitableness. And with that virtue, to that virtue must be added knowledge. So if somebody truly has faith, it affects their, their giving, their character. You understand? And then they can receive knowledge. But if they don't go in the order of Jah, they go out of order. And out of order means it's broke, it's busted, ain't working. So anyway, back to this. They found uh, a single cluster of grapes that was so large that it had to be borne on a carrying frame by two of them. So, so two men had to carry this cluster because it was just so large. You understand? As well as they found pomegranates, so we call Roman. Roman, Roman, and Belis, um, Zaf, I mean, I mean um, figs as well, they found there. And they brought back samples of this, and we have it from Numbers chapter 13, verse, verse 23. Now, at the end of 40 days, the mission was 40 days to, to, sky, to, 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 to spy out, to scout out the promised land. Now, remember, there is this particular document that is probably very available to one. It's called the... Um, um, is it called the Africa Mission? I don't know if it's the Africa Mission, the Mission to Africa. We'll put Africa Mission, right? There was the Africa Mission, right, of the 60s, right? I think it was 61, if I'm correct. You understand, 1961. You understand, the Africa Mission at that particular time. But remember, the land grant was since 55. You understand, it was since 1955. Also, a key note that the first... Um, um, land grant administrator of the Shashimani land grant was a black Hebrew or Hebrew Israelite, or we would say an Ethiopian Hebrew, um, Mr. James Piper and his wife out of Montserrat. So let's, let's understand the connection when we talk about Torah, when we talk about ourselves as so-called black Jews or more correctly Ethiopian Hebrews, you understand what we're really talking about. And this is not something we're making up today. You understand, but something that we are able now to find because of the increase of information. You understand, the access to a lot of documents and, and evidence that was suppressed because of the ability now to, um, you know, with the Internet and, and, and the media and, and so forth and so on, we can send, send entire documents and PDF files. So this information is getting out there. You know, we can scan it, you know, and share it with others. So sharing is caring. But now, at the end of 40 days, 
Remember, 40 days, a key significant 40 days. Remember, they wandered for 40 years, but now at the end of 40 days, they returned and reported to Moses, Aaron, and the whole Israelite, Beta Israel community, to everybody, right, at a place called Kadesh, Kadesh, or Kadesh. Now, this place, Kadesh, also when you look up Hebron, also look up Kadesh, or Kadesh, K-A-D-E-S-H, which means sanctuary or holy place. Look up um, Kadesh in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and, 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 and check, out the, check out the knowledge there. Check out the information there as well. If you don't have a copy of that, you can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and you can download a free one. I think it's forward slash studies page. You should be able to find it there. But now when they went to um, report, they said that the land, and this is very similar to what happened within um, Shashimani and when they went on the Africa mission. You understand? When they went on the Africa mission, this is Africa. You understand? Know when they went on the Africa mission, then there's Ethiopia. They reported that the land did indeed flow with milk and honey. In other words, it was a very blessed place. It, it was rich. Nobody would starve. Everybody would be able to eat. You know what I mean? Since that's basically we always talk about the things we do because we want to eat. We, you know, niggas got to eat. Well, this land had milk and honey. It was, it was bountiful. You understand? It was truly as Yahweh told them. But, now, now, now this, this is a big, this is a big, I have to say stupid ass but right here, right? Because but, it says that the people who inhabit it now, you have to remember that, there were 12 spies, but keep this in mind, the 10 lies, right? The 10 lies. Now, the liars now reported, the 10 of them reported that the people who inhabited it were powerful, and the cities were fortified and very large, and that they had saw the Anakites, the Anakim there, the Anakites. Now, the, some say the Anakis, others can go off and speculate on that if they will. But they saw the giants. In other words, those were the giants. Some say they were a remnant of the hybrids. You know, some might even try to say reptilian, so forth and so on, right? But this is what they reported in Numbers chapter 13, verses 25 to 28. Now, Caleb, Caleb, it's ancient called Caleb, or Kelb in the Afro-Semitic, the Hebrew, and the Ethiopic, and the Amharic, well, not them hark because them hark has has other influences from the Oromo language. So, but from in the Ethiopic, the good is El means dog. It means dog in in the Shemitic. You understand? Kaleb Kelb it means dog, right? And we would, would like to teach you about Joshua and his dogs because after a while, when they had to take back their land. Joshua and his dogs had to go up in there, you know what I'm saying, and had to use force. That's 40 years later. Now, now, I want you to over, if they had only listened to Jah, if they only listened to Abba, but instead they allowed their eyes and the weak hearts amongst them, the, the Erevrav, you know what I'm saying, the, the Lik Sawoch, you know, the, the mixed multitude, the riffraff, they let the riffraff amongst them to say the unfaithful riffraff amongst them, deceive them. But so here's where Kalev, he hushed the people. Now remember, this is about the whole community. This is a lot of folks. This is a lot of folks who are now want to hear, well, what, what is our promised land like? Like when anyone came forward years ago from Ethiopia, we all would gather wherever that person would choose to reason and show vids and show other things and, you know, just sit and listen and there'd be hours or whatever and ask questions. We were interested. So now imagine thousands, if not millions of people, you understand, Kaleb, he hushed them. You understand? It, oh, I say he barked at them, right? And he urged the people to go up and to take the land. He was like, hush the noise. We can go up and we can take the land. You understand? Yeah, there's giants there. Yeah, they got cities, powerful, all that. But John is on our side. We can do it. You see, that's an act of faith. Faith, courage. He's demonstrating the courage. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. But, right, the other scouts... You know, the, 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 the ten, you understand, the ten, 
the other scouts, they spread calumnies about the land. They were spreading a lot of rumors. It's like people here, like, yes, Hala Salasi gave out a nice shot, Shimani, yeah, Ethiopia, Africa, but you know, uh, but then they started, but you hear the butt coming. But such and such and such and such are giving you some sad stories and who knows the verity of a lot of these things. You understand? Who knows if one didn't just reap what they sowed? You understand? So forth and so on, or who went there under the wrong intent. You understand? But other scouts, they spread calumnies about the land. Now we hear a lot of negative about Ethiopia, so forth and so on. Now we see the big giants are in there. These big globalists from the Asian nations are renting out land or buying out land and farming on the land, so forth and so on. Now folks say, oh, we can't go there no more, so forth. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same evil report. It's, it's an evil heart it, because of a lack of faith. Therefore, they are cowards. They don't have no courage, not even the courage to work together in Jah covenant, not even the courage to affirm their birthright. You know what I'm saying? Instead, they go there with the birth wrong and with the Babylonian names at customs and wonder why people don't accept them as Ethiopians. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? You take the name Rastafari on, but you keep your Babylonian name, you understand, or, or the Babylonian name, so forth and so on. Why? Makes no sense. Darn sense, but it's because of a lack of faith. Because there's some there's something that prevents them. People say, "Oh, I don't have the money." Well, people save up. You you work it out. It's not like it's an impossible fee, like that much money you cannot get. You understand? In due time. But this is it's just another example. So the ten other scouts they spread calumnies, calling it, and this is what they called it. They said the land, and this is according to the 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 Judaic um right here the Judaica it says calling it quote one that devours its settlers so they started to spread rumors that yeah the settlers went over there but they're having a hard time and things are really bad for them and oh my goodness oh you know and people are like oh wow for real so they know that yes Hala Selassie gave I and I the land yes this is I and I promised land but we can't, what, what can we do about it? You see, because they're listening, you know, they say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But there's a principle in that. The principle is this, faith comes by hearing. That is science. That is divine science. Faith, your faith comes by what you hear. If you keep hearing negative stuff and you want to hear negative stuff, then that's going to affect your faith. You know, if people keep telling you, you are this, you are that, you are the next thing, you keep listening to them. And allowing it to, and, 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 and you accept this because you have faith in it. You see, so faith comes by hearing. But for us, faith comes by hearing, but we are to hear the word of Jah. So instead of listening to what Jah had said to them, you will go in there, and he said he will take care of them little by little, and you will gain the fullness of the land. Do not be afraid. But instead, they believe the ten liars or the ten false witnesses. They reported that the land's people were giants and were stronger than the Israelites. Wow, that's deep. How do they know that those people in the land are stronger than us? By what determination? After they've seen all that Yahweh has done, because they had no faith in Jah. They might have taught Jah, but they didn't have no faith in Jah. And it was what they spoke wasn't what Jah said, it was what their own, their own error spoke, their own rebellious and ignorant selves spoke. So they reported that the land's people were giants and they were stronger than the Israelites. We hear a lot of that too. You understand? The Africans are stronger than us and, and they're giants there and there's, there's war there. and there's a, Okay, all right. You, you, see, you see the connection? The whole community, this is the deep part, the whole community called Yishroyel. Israel, Hulu, all of Israel, what happened? They broke into crying. I mean, I mean, not just some boo hoo hoo hoo, but, but, but you know, like when, <laughs> you know, it, it's like hope, de hope deferred, in a sense, makes the heart sad, Proverbs says. Hope deferred. Like if you're expecting something and somebody has to say, oh, I know you were expecting it today, but. It ain't going to come today because, and, and you, you could feel it. And where do you feel it? Where do you feel that, 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 those feelings? In your heart, in your stomach, in, in this center part. 
You understand? But the Bible says in Yeshua that waters will flow out of us when we are in our proper, you understand, person in Christ. You understand? And that means in faith, not faithless. But the whole community now here in these tents, you understand, here in these tents, they broke up into crying. They railed against Moses. They railed against Aaron, right? And they had shouted, if only we might die in this wilderness. They were like, you know, we should die out here. It's almost like what's happening right now. People are preferring, even those of us who one time had that faith and that hope, you understand, to so-called die in Babylon, you understand, and, and all, kind of like laying down our roots in Babylon because of that hope deferred. And hope is expectation. Um, Isaiah chapter 20, I think it's verse 5 or 6, it says, um, They shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, and of Egypt, their glory. Isn't that very interesting, that hope part, and how this is Ethiopia, Shashimani, and, and people see the, the, the pictures of some starving people somewhere in Africa, and they think in their foolish hearts, oh, that's everybody is starving. And you don't see how big Africa is? You understand how big Africa is? You know what I'm saying? You know, but so it is. Now, Moses and Aaron, they fell on their faces when they saw this. Because the people railed, but it wasn't like the people just railed. I'm railing, I'm railing. No, people got bitter. People like, we, we trusted you, you understand, and we was thinking that it would be so easy and it would be like this, and now we, we hear these people that we trust more than Jah. We trust these ten liars, these ten false witnesses more than Jah. It's, 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 we have to ask that question among ourselves, too, each of us individually and come together collectively and, and be, be honest. So if you can't be honest, then you're not, you're not in faith, you're not in true faith. You know what I'm saying? You're covering up. You, you, you haven't let go of ego. You understand? It says if anyone comes to I, Yeshua says, he must, he must deny himself. He must deny, he must let go of his ego. He must let go of his ego. You know what I'm saying? Pick up his cross. You know what I'm saying? And follow me. You know what I'm saying? Pick up his cross and follow the way of Yeshua. That means that we have to conform ourselves, you know, to that word of faith. This is what Hala Salasi the first teaches us. And this is what he also shows us by his living example of the fatherhood. So it's interesting, too, because they also, the Israelites also were talking about, you know what, we need to get a new captain. Let's have an election, and let's get somebody else besides this Moses and Aaron because they got us in this predicament. You understand? And look at us now. You understand? The people are strong. There's giants. You understand? And, and if we go there, we're going to be killed and be eaten up. The land be eaten up people. How do they know the land was eaten up people? Eating up settlers. How do they know this? For 40 days, they saw somebody getting eaten up? No, they came back and um, they, uh, you could say they exaggerated. You understand? And, and that sort of exaggeration is deception. You understand? Because they lied, and they lied against what Josh said could be done, and the people heard the liars. They believed the liars instead of those of true faith. And here's Joshua and Caleb right here. So Joshua, Yeshua, and Caleb, uh, Caleb, Caleb, they rent their clothes. They, they ripped their clothes. They were like, you know, they rent their garments, and they exhort it. They try to build up the Israelites. They try to build up Beit Israel. They say, don't fear. You understand? Not tifru. You understand? Don't fear. Stop fearing, man. Not to rebel and don't rebel against Jah. You understand? We are still in Jah's way. Don't go outside. Don't go astray. You understand? Numbers chapter 14, verses 5 to 9, just as the community threatened to pelt them with stones, so the people were hearing them say that, like, like we're saying, stop fearing about Ethiopia. We got it. We still have it. And then people are picking up stones ready to stone them. You know what I'm saying? It's ready to hurt them. Like today, we like picking up guns or picking up sticks or picking up knives or whatever because they don't want to submit to the will of Jah. In other words, but notice this, how much they trust these liars. They must have known the people who came back with the false witnesses were liars or were not really completely reliable in other ways, but they had more faith in flesh. 
You understand? Then in the word, the spirit, the word of Jah. So we have ten on one side. Now notice how a lot of people say the majority. This is what we say about this whole democracy thing. It depends on what are the people. If the people are Jah's people, democracy can work. If the people are a mixed multitude, this is the example we're finding here. A mixed multitude, democracy is not the best is not the best policy. You understand? Know in that case, it's monarchy, and in a sense, this was theocracy right here. But the people. You understand, the deceived, deluded people now, they threaten to pelt, you understand, them with stones. Symbolically, throwing the stone is a curse, a regiment. You understand, it's a, it, it's a curse. You understand, so to throw the stone is an act like stoning something, throwing stones at something, it's cursing, it's a symbol. You understand, it's, it's like a hieroglyph in a sense. It, it's it's a, a, a pictograph, in other words. So they wanted to pelt them with stones, but really what they were doing was cursing them. You understand? Know oh, Joshua and Kale, they need to shut the F up, man. They don't know what they're talking about. Moses and Aaron are lying to us. You understand? Know we need to go back to Egypt. We need to die out here. Forget what Moses is saying. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to start our own thing up. So just at that time, John's presence, you know what John's presence is? The Shekinah, you know, the Shekinah, the Shekinah, the shock and awe. His presence, John's presence appeared in the tabernacle, just when they was about to, you know, just when they was about to, to start their curses up, Jah showed his presence to show you who Jah's, whose side was Jah on. But still, after all of that, the people didn't get it. It's like when we show showing what's happening in the history of our people, we're showing the scripture, and people don't want to argue against what we're saying. It's like the Marcus Garvey thing, want to tell us that, hey, well, Marcus was a great man. We never disagree with that. Marcus, this and that, so forth and so on. But in the response, we heard nothing about Dr. Malaku Bayan. We heard nothing really about the Ethiopian World Federation or the proper order of things. You understand? Know Wanted to spend all that energy defending Garvey. You know said so follow Garvey. Go where Garvey went. Become a Roman Catholic. Garvey became. You understand? Boom. You know, and, and it's interesting because Garvey too, he, he, he had faith 